Sit. Sit, Regis. Thank Team you. Click attack. All right, ready? Go. Go. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a chilly edition of Walk with Regis. Today is October 9th. Today the weather, the highs will be in the low 60s and the lows will be... Put that down! Go get me his muzzle. Oh, never mind. Put that down. That's bad. Can you tell Danny to give me his muzzle? Third day in a row, you start. You're gonna start getting your muzzle from now on. So the temperature, the lows will be in the high 40s to low 50s. Where is it? Should be on the door near the door. Sorry, guys. He has a muzzle for when we take him for a walk, but he normally doesn't eat off the ground when he, I'm walking him. But this is the third time this week he's eaten off the ground. So, I'm going to slap that muzzle on him to make sure he don't eat off the ground. You done goofed. Because our neighbors don't know how to throw food away in the damn garbage. They just fucking throw it on the yard and in, in the parking lots and anywhere except the garbage. It should be right there. That's where Joe had it. Joe used it last. I swear to God, if I have to come and look and find it, I'm going to be pissed. Not on the door. Well, then maybe it fucking fell. Look around at shit. What do you think I've been doing here? Standing here? Here. Joe's the last one that fucking had it. Where do you think he fucking put it? I have no idea. I swear to God, Joe puts shit down where it doesn't belong and then forgets where he puts it and then blames everyone else. If it was a snake, you would have fucking bit me. I didn't even see it. I should have known he kept it on a scooter. All right, come here. Come here. Regis, come here. Come here, stay. No, come here. This is what happens when bad little doggies eat off the ground. Come on. Continuously. Several times throughout the week. Alright guys, let's see what kind of news stories we have after the drama of this morning.
Yes, he can still breathe. As you can see, he's sticking his tongue out and everything. He can still drink water if we needed to. It's not really that big on him. It just prevents him from opening his mouth up all the way to consume food left on the ground. And as you see, someone did bob didn't bother to pick up after their dog. And guess who's going to get blamed for it? All right, let's see what kind of news stories we have today. So I'm going to scroll down so I can read news stories and keep scrolling sideways to the comment section. I'm not scrolling sideways to the comment section. Well, I suppose we just wants to walk behind me now. Alright, I'm looking for a new story. Well, it's not local, but it's interesting. So, Harriet the cat, who went missing in California, was found nine years later in Idaho. A cat that disappeared nine years ago in California was found in Idaho thanks to a microchip and a couple of good Samaritans. The cat, a short-haired, tabby-colored domestic house cat named Harriet, previously lived at a California ranch with her owner when she disappeared nearly a decade ago. On September 19th, a couple found her on the side of the road a thousand miles away from her previous home and took her to a nearby shelter. The cat was dropped off at the Kuntenai Humane Society in Humane, Idaho, about 90 miles south of the Canadian border. Harriet had a microchip, making it much easier to track down her shocked previous owner. We're always excited when we find a chip, Nielsen told USA Today. The lady who was at the front desk called the owner that was listed on the chip. She started talking to her, and the lady was pretty much speechless because she didn't even realize that her cat was still alive. Nielsen said everyone was shocked Harriet turned up so far from home. Susan Moore, Harriet's former owner, lives on 41 acres outside of Sanger, California. In 2010, the cat, the family already had dogs, so she said, decided to get a cat as well. That's when Harriet came into her life. She was just a kitten then, but the shelter told her she was very sick. They thought she had feline leukemia and suggested she choose another cat. I don't want another cat, she told them. So Moore took care of Harriet, giving her medicine twice a day and raising her in her office for the first month of her life. When she was healthy enough, she moved to the family's ranch, spending lots of time outdoors with their dogs. She lived there until one night in 2013, she disappeared. Then on September 19th, Moore got a call from Hayden, Idaho. We have your cat, she recalled the caller telling her. Oh, hold on. Poopy's coming out. She has had numerous cats. When they told her they had Harriet, she thought that it was impossible. My son was eight when she went missing. He's now 17. She has also outlived the family's dogs. How did she end up so far away, and what was she doing all this time? Moore thinks Harriet might have sneaked into a horse trailer at the time of her disappearance and been picked up by somebody when she got out. Sorry guys, I know you don't want to see that shit. <laughs> Literal. I'm trying not to let you see it. Alright. Her husband also considered the possibility that she fell prey to a coyote. She searched everywhere, including at a nearby shelter. I was very distraught. I had just had a very hard time believing she got caught by a coyote. Coyote. She was very smart. Nielsen said there had been a rise in people relocating from California to Idaho, so she suspects someone found Harriet when she was out roaming around in California and didn't check for a chip. From there, they likely moved to Idaho, bringing Harriet with them. Nielsen said, pets turning up safely speaks to how important microchips can be. Typically, people say the microchips look like a grain of rice. That's how tiny they are. She said the chips are inserted using needles and are usually placed in the nape of the cat's neck where it's fatty. 
you just grab the skin typically they don't even feel it which is good and then when you have a scanner it scans the information that's on the chip when scanned the chip gives shelters and other organizations its number that they can look up to get information such as the owner's name phone number sometimes an address Nielsen said they're pretty inexpensive 25 at her shelter and most vets office can do the procedure some people think that if their animal has a collar on with an ID tag, that's enough. Unfortunately, animals climb around, they climb under fences, their collars get pulled off, and they won't have any form of identification. It's better to have a microchip because that way you know they'll find their way back to you. It's their best chance for them to find their way home. I feel like she belonged to someone else after this. She lived with someone for nine years. I mean, I have no idea if she would remember us. For now, Harriet's nine lives, past nine lives are a mystery. Okay, let's see. Man, here's another one. Man accused of killing wife and parents in shooting rampage in New York State. A man went on a shooting rampage that ended with the death of his wife, mother, and father before he killed himself, authorities said in Erie County, New York, Friday. The violence happened late Thursday morning, east of Buffalo. Um, Sheriff's Office detectives released additional details about the shootings Friday. Eric Burgum, 43, is accused of shooting his wife, Mary Beth Burgum, 37, before going to another residence where he fatally shot his mother, Nancy Burgum, 64, Erie County Sheriff John Garcia said at a news conference. Eric Burgum then went to a 10x shooting club, fired off rounds at its range with his father, Mark Burgum, 64, at his side, then fatally shot him. The son then killed himself, the sheriff said. Eric Burgum had a permit for a handgun or pistol, and detectives are trying to determine if it's the one used during the spree. Well, it looks like that with or without a permit, people will use guns for shooting sprees. And it looks like that with or without restrictions on guns, that there is going to continue to be shooting sprees. So this is more or less a matter of, no matter what you do, guns are going to forever be a big part of mass murders, shootings. Alright, let's see. Sacred Easter Island statues suffer irreparable damage after a volcano fire. Nothing really to read about the article. The, the title of the article is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, he wants to sniff the wet spot on the ground. It looks like seagull droppings. Owner, oh, here's another one. Owner posts hilarious sign on upstate New York mailbox to avoid bills. The only thing worse than getting junk mail is getting bills. Someone has come up with a hilarious way to avoid those nasty bills in the mailbox. Don Peterson came across a creative cardboard sign hanging from a mailbox in upstate New York. It read, My mailbox is under quarantine, not accepting bills at this time. The only thing missing is the face mask over the box. Not sure if it worked, but it sure is funny. Okay, so. It's it's hilarious, yeah. Sense of humor, yeah. But if the mailman don't drop off the bills in your mailbox, unfortunately, those bills still exist. And without your invoice, so you can mail in your payment or without proof I mean on your part that you received it they can tack on all kinds of fees um, hidden fees um, tack on more money late fees and everything else you could end up paying more out of pocket and by not accepting the bills in your mailbox and looking at them you might forget about them and might accumulate you might Instead of paying a hundred for that month, 
you might, oops, forget about it and end up owing 300 and having your services shut off because you didn't want to accept the bills in your mailbox. I know it's funny, funny little joke, but that funny little joke could, you know, end up really screwing over your life. That's not one of those jokes you want to be making. I don't understand why people just don't accept the bills in their mailbox like I do and just pay them. Alright, Regis. Come on. Good boy. Come on. Alright, let's see what else. I'm only going to read the title of it, not the article. Two teens and a child among ten people killed in an Ireland gas station explosion. I'm kind of curious though. I bet it was a cigarette. Why are you out of the frame? Here I am reading a news article, a uh, headline, and you're out of the frame. I don't know why you stopped and then started whining about it. You're the one that stopped. Now go. Keep going. Keep going. Go. Mush. He knows what go means. Well, it's not telling me what caused the explosion, so... Alright. Thursday deadline passes for alleged tops mass market... Or tops market mass shooter to file paperwork meaning that the deadline has come and gone for the tops market mass shooter to turn in his um, criminally insane paperwork and it hasn't been turned in yet which means he can't say that he is innocent by reason of insanity I don't think he wanted to do that anyway. Maybe his attorneys wanted him to, but he probably didn't want to. And I bet you his attorneys were pushing for it, and I bet you he said, no, I did it. I had no regrets. Man injured in an overnight Seneca Street shooting. A male was shot in an overnight shooting incident on Seneca Street, Buffalo Police have said. The authorities responded to a call at 3.20 a.m. on the 2300 block of Seneca Street Saturday morning. A 40-year-old Buffalo man was struck during some type of dispute at the establishment. He was transported to ECMC and is listed in stable condition. If you have any information, please call or text the confidential tip line 716-847-2255. All right, let's see what other news stories we got. I'm only going to read the title of this one because I feel like it's going to evoke some points. But the title says, a Mississippi woman says she felt shamed after a reverend refused to baptize her baby who had been born before she got married. Ma'am, I'm sure it has nothing to do with you or your baby or the circumstances that led to you having a child before marriage. It's purely their religious beliefs, their religious standings. That's how they've been for hundreds of thousands of years. No online ad temper tantrum is going to change that. 
I'm going to click on this real quick and give a brief read to see the circumstances. Who knows? Maybe they were going to get married and he died. That's before even reading the article. I'm going to assume that they were supposed to get married and he died and she had the baby anyway to honor him. So who knows? We'll see. Mississippi woman called out a reverend for declining to baptize her child. Reverend Dwayne Warren wrote a letter to Camry saying that the ceremony can't be done before she is not married. Pastor was, was met with major backlash under the Facebook post. Detailed her experience in a Facebook post last month saying situations like this are why young people are scared to go to church. I will be the first to admit, yes, I have sinned and I've done wrong in my life. But how did me trying to dedicate my daughter to Jesus turn us into being shamed for being young parents and unmarried? McClellan said that after her baby dedication was confirmed, she received a letter, a church she's attended since she was a child. Um, what the heck just happened? I was busy scrolling on a, the ad, the, the article, and it vanished, but I got it back. I am informed that you and the baby's father are living together in sin. The baby was conceived before the parents were married. The grandmother is living with a man in sin. You and the father have not been in regular faithful attendance at our church. The letter added that if the church conducted the ceremony, it would set an example for our youth and children. The Herald reported that the church, located in Sumhall, Mississippi, only backs monogamous heterosexual couples who are married as per their website. The comment section of his post criticized the Reverend's letter that left her heartbroken. In an updated Facebook post, McLendon said that the superintendent met with the pastor and sorted out the issue. Okay, so it's not like what I thought. Her and her boyfriend got pregnant before marriage, had the baby, still didn't get married, wanted to baptize the baby. Church is against all that. I mean, they wrote books about that. What do you think the Scarlet Letter was about? I, do people even read anymore? I mean, is that still a thing in school? Or aren't you, aren't you assigned books like the Scarlet Letter so you can study it? And I don't get it. Alright, let's see if there's any more before I go. North Tonawanda Police Reunite Young Girl with Parents. North Tonawanda Police posted on a Facebook that the parents have been located. Thank you everyone for your help. Police say a white girl, 4 to 5 years old, about 3 feet Five inches, blue eyes, blonde hair extending to her lower back, wearing a yellow Hello Kitty dress, purple Crocs, and a purple zip-up hoodie. Was spotted by officers walking down 15th Avenue to Meadow Drive. If you have any information, etc., but she was found, so I don't need to read all that off. And with that, guys, this is the end of our walk. If you like all the drama at the beginning of this video, then hit the like button. If you did not like all the drama in the beginning of this video, hit that dislike button. Share if you want to, subscribe if you want to, and we will see you guys next week. Bye bye.